Hello and welcome to the second part in our ASP.NET Core series. In the previous video, we downloaded Visual Studio. We talked a little bit about what ASP.NET Core actually is. We created our project, the one we see right here on the screen, and then we ran it both with the debugger and without the debugger. So, in this video, we are going to explore the files, all the files that we have here on the left-hand side, and we are going to talk a little bit about Model View Controller and how ASP.NET Core implements it. Let's simply explore the files first, and we're just going to talk briefly about them. We're not going to go in depth until we actually need a certain file. At the very top here, we have the solution. And if you remember from the previous video, I said that a solution could have multiple projects. Our solution only has one project. So we can also see it's listed as one of one projects. And the project it has is my cookbook. And you can actually see the second I select my cookbook, it actually opens up that particular pro uh, project. And in here, we can see stuff like the target framework. It says we are using um, .NET 5.0. And we also have a package reference here, something called um, Razor 5.0 version. Nothing we need to worry about right now. If we go down a bit, we have something called connected services. We don't have to talk about dependencies. It's just different frameworks and packages we have and we're going to talk more about that when we need it. We have a properties folder with some launch settings. And this is just stuff like, uh, for instance, when you press here, you can say it launches with the IIS Express. And you can actually see there's some launch op options defined for that right here. So that's just stuff like that. Again, not something we need to worry about right now. Then we have the www root folder, and in here we have the CSS, JavaScript, uh, and a library folder. The CSS simply has the site CSS, some just generic CSS that's available for us so that when we run the project, it doesn't look like something from the 80s. We have a JavaScript file, again, with some site.js, and it doesn't have anything here, and it just has a simple comment that says that we can write our JavaScript code in here. And then we have a library folder that contains a bootstrap and jQuery files. So that's where we would place those kind of files. Then we have the controllers, the models, and the views. We're going to talk more about those in a second. We have the app settings.json. Again, nothing we have to worry about right now. Just a JSON file that defines some settings for our application. We have a program.cs file, and this is actually what makes um, the ASP.NET a little special, because if you're coming from a different web development background, you, you probably don't have this file, but if you're coming from a Java or a Sharp background, then you know that every program starts with a main function, uh, usually, and that's what we have right here. So whenever a request is sent to our server, it's actually the main method that we have right here that starts up the entire application. We then have the startup.cs file. And in here, we simply just configure a lot of different stuff um, and we apply different settings like routing and authorization. Uh, the HTTPS redirection that we also enabled is also listed in this file. We will be using this file uh, later in the course. But the big thing that we need to talk about in this video is the model view controller part. And before we dive into that, let's just quickly recap what model view controller is. If you have developed with the MVC pattern before, this will all make sense to you. And I'm not going to go totally in depth with it, I'm just going to quickly hover over it. Now, usually what happens when you get a request is that you have some sort of a browser. This could be Edge, Chrome, whatever. So you have a browser, there we go, that sends a request to a server, right? 
So when this happens, the server needs to do some work and then sends back an HTML file that the browser would then display to the user out here. That's the usual request. Now, when this request hits the server, the ASP.NET program fires up and starts using the MVC pattern. And MVC is Model View Controller, so it consists of three parts. We have a model, we have a controller, and we have a view. So when the user requests a view, because that's essentially what a user is doing, he will actually get redirected and go into a controller. The controller will then do all the work. The controller is the one that's actually getting initialized. So the controller will maybe go into the model and get some data, and then it will pass that data into the view so the view can be set up. And once the view is ready, the controller is then going to push that view out to the user. That's the gist of it. Now, the reason why you are using Model View Controller is primarily to help decouple your application so that you get this nice organized workflow. So you know, you know, all my views are here, my controls are here, my models are here, and they have different responsibilities. So it's a good structure and it's a nice workflow to work in. Now, ASP.NET implements it and uses routing to get us to the place we want to go. And in order to see that in action, let's go back to the application and let's simply fire it up without the debugger. Whoops. So here is our application. But where are we actually going? We are just going just to the server. We're not specifying where we want to go. And we can actually go into the startup.cs method. And right here in the bottom, there's something that, that's called endpoints. And we have defined a default endpoint here. And an endpoint, it's just um, basically what the user is requesting right here in the browser. They are putting an address into the address bar, and that is basically what is defined as the endpoint, the, where they want to go. And we can see here that the pattern is defined here. This is the default pattern. So if you go into our site and you don't specify where you want to go, this is actually where you're going to go. It's going to set the controller to be home and the action to be index and with an optional ID. So let's go into our controller methods right now because that's where it's saying we are going. We're going to the controller called home in the action called index. So I go into my home controller and I can see that it's a normal class. It inherits from the controller. It has a constructor and then it has this index method which is a public method, returns an IX result, and it's called index, and it just returns a view. This is where the program is telling us to go by default. That's what that last line means. If we were to go into our browser here and say slash um, home slash index and press enter, we are going the same place. And that is because the MVC pattern is implemented into the routing system. So what that means is that whenever you go into www.our cookbook, we're just going to call it cookbook. Right now it's just on the local host, um, dot com. Whenever you go to that default endpoint here and you don't write anything more, it's going to default to going to forward slash home forward slash index. Remember that was defined in the startup method. Now this here specifies the controller, the first part, the second part, the action or the method or whatever you want to call it. And then there is what's called an optional ID. So we could provide an ID here 
but it is optional and not used in this example. This here, the first part, is always the controller. This here is which method to access on that particular controller. So going back to Visual Studio, we can see that our home controller has an additional me method called privacy that also returns an IX result and returns a view. So whenever you see this pattern, you know it's a particular view file you can access. So just for fun, let's go into our browser again and up here say, okay, I want to go to the home controller and then I want to try and go into the privacy method. I press enter and I get redirected to this page, which has a privacy policy. It's the same place if you were to press the button up here. So where are these view files actually located? We know right now that we're going into the controller. We know we're going into a particular method, but how does it know which view file to use? And as long as you're using the structure, ASP.NET will actually do it for you. So if you open up the view folder, you can see we have a folder called home, and that's because every controller usually has a corresponding folder within the view folder. So for instance, we have the home controller, and then we have the home folder on the views. So all view files related to the home controller should be into this folder. So seeing as we have two methods, an index and a privacy, that returns a view, we should have those two in this folder and honky dory there we go we have them both we have an index and a privacy this privacy is the site we're on right now and you can see that we have this paragraph of text that is also right here is this paragraph right there so that is how asp.net has everything structured that's the way it implements the mvc pattern and that's how it uses routing now Quickly recapping um, or quickly talking about this particular page because you might notice this is not just an HTML page. It's something that's called a CS HTML page. And that's because you can write normal HTML as you see right here, but you can also do the at symbols. Now, everything that comes after an at symbol is just plain old C sharp code. So here we can say um, we have the at, which means whatever comes next is C sharp and we access a view data collection by the title keyword. And we kind of print that out into the, the H1 tag here. And we can see the view data, data is actually created here. The view data title is set to privacy policy. So that is also what gets printed out here in the top. We have the brackets here that, you know, is basically just a block of C-sharp code. So if you wanted multiple lines, you could do that. And it also means it's not gonna output it. It's, you know, if you're coming from PHP, it's the same as, you know, where, where you have those um, PHP tags. I think it's like this. Um, and you have the other one that is, you know, if you're just outputting a single line, I think it's like this. Um, that's the same if you're coming from PHP. That is just the same as when we write at or at and some brackets. It just means we're using c -sharp code in those areas. So that's how it works, but if we go into the page here, we can actually see we, we get a lot more than what is defined in the view file, right? I mean, we, we have a um, sort of a navigational bar, we have a footer, um, but, but where's that defined? Because in the index and, and the privacy, there's nothing about it. And that's because if we examine the view folder here, there is a shared folder, and then there is a layout file. The layout file is where all this HTML boilerplate code is located, and it is a file that is shared amongst other view files. So every single view file is going to default to using this layout file, and we can see right here we have the navigation, and right here we have something called render body, which is exactly where our view files are going to be rendered. So everything we write into privacy dot CSHTML right here. Everything that's here is simply going to be outputted down here. So that's how it works. And we have something called a view start method here, where we can also see that the layout is set to this underscore layout file. It is possible to have different files use different layouts, but we're not going to go into that right now. 
but of course it is possible but right now every file is just going to default to using this layout so if we added an extra navigational item it would show up on all our pages this is actually going to be it for this video we have covered a lot in these two videos but primarily just building the foundation we, we, we've just been creating our project and trying to understand all the files and how ASP.NET handles a simple request from the browser and how um, you know the routing works how it has implemented the model view controller so right now we should have a fairly good idea on how the basics work and then we should be able to build upon that foundation and that's exactly what we're going to do in the next video so right now it's been a lot of setup a lot of theory a lot of talking but going forward it's going to be way more practical because then we are going to actually code and develop and expand our little cookbook application here so thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you next time